talking about example C right here. We started to set it up. Okay, just a reminder, examples A and B, they're the same logs on both sides. So we just set what was inside uh, those logarithms equal to each other and we were able to solve for the variable. However, when we get to example C, we only have a single logarithm. We don't have logs on both sides. So our option here is to get this equal to zero and we're going to graph it. So in this case, we added that negative six from the other side. We added six to both sides uh, so that it was equal to zero. We had a constant on this side, so we went ahead and combined those constants right there. So six plus six gave us 12. Now we need to put it in our calculator uh, into y equals. Before we do that, um, I want to write this out because we're going to have to use the change of base formula, so I want to write it out before we type it into our calculators. Now, unfortunately, you cannot combine this 12 minus 4 because the 4 is attached by multiplication to the logarithm. So we've got to keep it the way it is. So it's going to be 12 minus 4. We need some parentheses. Log. Remember, it's the log of the quote-unquote big number. So in this case, the 9x plus 6 divided by the log of the base. Okay, so that's exactly what we're going to plug into our y equals here. So let's do that. 12 minus 4 parentheses log of 9x plus 6. Make sure we close that one set of parentheses divided by the log of 12 and we need two parentheses there at the end then we're going to graph it and we're going to find where it crosses the x-axis well i can see my graph but i can't see where it crosses the x-axis yet so i'm going to adjust my window um, obviously it's going to happen to the right of what we're looking at so um, I need my, I'm going to change my x minimum to zero. My x maximum is a little bit of a shot in the dark. I'm going to pick 30. Um, and I really don't need my y's to be that big because I'm really just looking for where it crosses the x-axis. So I'm going to change those negative 5 to 5. Okay, so those are my window settings there. There's nothing, there's not an exact science to that. Okay. Uh, other than the fact that I know it's happening to the right of positive 10, so that's why I made my x maximum um, so much bigger. So let's graph it again. Oh, and clearly I didn't make it big enough. So let's make it a little bit bigger. Let's go 75. I think maybe it kind of crosses there, but I still can't tell. So, let's go 150, oops, 150 to 200. Okay, finally crosses somewhere over here. So, second trace, zero. Um, my y value is positive here. I gotta move it so it becomes negative. I'm just gonna go to the 200. Yeah, okay, it's finally negative over 200. Okay, 191.333. To be honest, the majority of your answers are not going to be this big. I made up this problem and clearly I should have checked it before I left it as an example on your notes. Um, but 
most of your answers are going to be more reasonable, smaller numbers than that. But you never know. Might be a big one like that. Okay? Well, let's see if example D comes out a little bit nicer. Um, now, we do have two logarithms in example D. Okay, but they're on the same side of the equation. So we can actually use the properties that we learned yesterday to make this a little bit more manageable to put into our calculator. Okay, remember one of our properties was that if we're subtracting two logarithms, we can condense that into a single logarithm uh, and we divide what was inside those logs. So then, here's what we're going to type into our y equals. Oops, it's not equal to zero yet. My bad. Got to subtract the one. It doesn't change anything in our problem here. That minus one is just on the end. Okay, so in our calculators, we are going to type log of we actually need two sets of parentheses here because we've got to put the x plus 2 in parentheses and the x plus 4 in parentheses and that whole thing is inside of our logarithm divided by the log of the base 5 and then minus 1 on the end. So clear everything out, log you got to add a second set of parentheses, x plus 2 divided by x plus 4, make sure you put that in parentheses, close both sets of parentheses, divided by the log of 5, close your parentheses, minus 1. I'm going to reset this zoom standard, so I don't know where it's going to cross. So it crosses here, over here in the negatives, um, and I don't think it's going to cross again over here. So let's find this zero over here. Um, Okay, it has that weird graph in it right there um, for a couple of reasons. One of them has to do with the logarithms. Remember, we can't take the log of a negative number, so probably the values between here um, would be giving us negatives inside of our logarithms. If we look at our table, yeah, there's several values here that give us an error. So they would be giving us a negative inside of the logarithm. Um, and it looks kind of weird. We have two parts to the curve as well because if you look at the way this combines, that gives us a rational expression inside of our logarithm. Rational expressions, if you remember, when we graph them, they have two pieces to their graph. Okay? So I want you to get a little practice with graphing these to solve them. So on